morning from the top of Loveland Pass. Today, going to be hiking what I'm going to call the Loveland Pass to A Basin Traverse. For a full trail guide of the Loveland Pass to A Basin Traverse, you can check the link in the description below. So you can get a preview of the route kind of behind me here. Once the clouds and lighting is better, I'll show you some closer looks. But essentially, you're going to be hiking from the top of Loveland Pass down to A Basin and then hopefully getting a ride or suffering up those road miles to get back to the top to form a loop. There's some beta on this route. I think it goes at like class three or class four, but distance and elevation I've kind of read all over the place. You're gonna also summit three official mountains, I believe, or maybe four. I've been looking at this route for a really long time. Weather today is supposed to be beautiful. Don't really wanna do a massive day, so this should be a perfect one to Check out. Just about a half mile up, there is this cairn here. You could theoretically cut to the shoulder. It's like another 100 feet to the top and just ride the saddle out. So that's what I'm gonna do. As you can see, hopefully, there is a well-established trail through Cupid to Grizzly right in there. So after that, it'll be off trail but for now you can haul ass i'm gonna kind of be limited on video especially talking about anything from now until the time we get to grizzly only because i already have a video on it i'll link it in the description below i'll also put in the snicktow one in case you wanted to extend your route but it's extremely extremely straightforward quick anecdote just to laugh at how things have changed so last time I hiked over to Grizzly it was literally the day after all of the ski resorts closed in 2020 so I literally rode copper the day before and my friend Rick and I were up here hiking looking down at a basin in the middle of the winter having no lift spinning and it was such a weird thing to see Thank God we are through those times. Summit of Grizzly. Man, that climb is tough. Looking over, you got a good, better view here of Tories on the left, Grays on the right. To the summit of Grizzly here, just about three miles and 2,000 feet of climbing. Uh, I've seen some trip reports confuse this one with the Centennial. This is not the Centennial. That one's down in the Sawatch Range. To start the traverse here, you're just gonna work down the pretty obvious grassy slope. Also, the elephant in the room. I forgot my helmet today. I would definitely recommend having a helmet. Beautiful high alpine lake there. Another look at Grays and Tories. I'm gonna really try to stay the ridge direct as much as I can. back to Grizzly. Well, this is the real part of the video where I know this could go. Like, I know I could climb up this. I know I could do that. I'm not sure if it connects here, but I'm by myself and I don't want to put myself in a dangerous position so I can see this obvious path that can connect me into this crack and get up there. So that's going to be my game plan. I know there might be some hardos who are like, oh, you're not climbing it direct. 
that's fine. I don't, I'll take that on the chin. But when you're solo and you don't know the route and you don't have much beta on it, it's best, based on personal experience, uh, you, I just don't like to fuck around with it. So I'll, I'm playing a little conservative and there's nothing wrong with that. All right, this is the crack I'm going for to get back on the ridge. Here's a look down the left side that I kind of avoided. Yeah, so I probably wouldn't do that at all. The right side here, a little bit more comfortable in terms of making moves. I have a feeling that I'm about to get cliffed out here, but like I said, I'm gonna ride this to the end. So straight ahead, cliffed out maybe, but it looks like I can just kind of skirt down there. Look back up at the scent of the second tower, so I kind of went choo, 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 choo. that sound effects, high quality stuff. section almost the whole ridge you got grizzly to your right next up we're gonna be dropping down and get some nice easier train over into Linawi mountain down to the east wall and back out mostly class two tiny sections of class three and nothing that's like really uh, made me think yet. If you want exposure, you can find some. Another little cliff out here, and I made my way through this little crack. Honestly, it looks like I could go right or left. I'm gonna stick to the left because it keeps me most direct to the next part of the ridge. Sometimes the angle of the shot gets sacrificed for safety. The next section here looks by far the most exposed so far. Call this the red section here. I'm gonna drop down to the ridge, down to that white sand spot, and then start climbing again. For now, I'm in it about three hours. Obviously, I film, so that slows me down quite a bit, but I'd say it's pretty average pace. I really haven't had to do a ton of route finding. That one first move I showed you guys was the only one I probably could have, but I just, like I said, avoided it. And yeah, the rest of it, I'm, as you can see, just right on the top of the ridge here. Another interesting little down climb. And I do apologize that I'm not doing more action shots of me here. I try to do it as much as I can and even probably push the envelope too much sometimes, but there's times where, especially without a helmet cam, I just, I have to be safe.
I'm just below the ridge line, maybe, I don't know, 100 feet. I don't know why, but I'm kind of cutting straight across this way. It honestly would have been probably faster just to get up there, be on a real trail, but here I am. First part of that traverse, definitely some uh, decent class three, maybe class four moves, depending on where you go. Rock quality, mediocre. Tried to sign the trail registry, but someone doesn't know how to seal it, so it was soaking wet. 2,500 feet of gain, and just about four miles of hiking. Uh, very pretty up here, very hot today. It's not ideal for one Nalgene, which is what I typically pack on shorter hikes. In any case, next up, you're moving over to A Basin. So you still have some more ridge line. It definitely is gonna get more technical. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then, yeah, you have a fun walk down the uh, ski resort. So here's a look at the next section. And yeah, it doesn't look like as rough of rock as what we were on previously, but it's definitely some more technical moves coming your way. on the top of, uh, this might be Lanawi Mountain. Maybe the other one was another mountain. I have no idea. There's a summit registry here, so this is a peak. Next up, just traversing down the east wall and uh, down the slopes of A Basin. Maybe you can make out the high alpine lake behind me, but this route really, really reminds me of the Wheeler Traverse down in Taos in New Mexico. Uh, Wheeler Cirque, I believe it's theoretically called, but um, very, very similar. The only bad part is I can't end at a parking lot. I have to make a loop either hitchhiking or walking up back to my car. But in terms of difficulty, terrain, views, exposure, loose rock, all really, really similar actually. When descending, I would avoid this east wall like the plague. It just looks like it goes slab to drop off to rotten gullies. So you can see where I'm going to be heading, which is this big dirt patch, and then ar around this knob through to the shoulder down to lunchtime. Virtual Sherpa, leave no trace 2022, even though it's over by the time this is posted. Oh man, I have been sticking directly to the east wall, so everything you see I've been on. There's definitely a like trail down here. You can see it end over there. With all the snow up here, this is a, a lot of loose shit. Oh, I was so focused for so long, I realized I had not taken my hoodie off, which I feel so much better now. So top of A Basin here, take a look around. Obviously, 
There's a number of ways to get down, but I'm just gonna stick to the road. The obvious one. Five miles, 2,800 feet of climbing. So excluding Loveland Pass climb, that's the uh, final climbing stats of the day. I read trip reports of people getting like class five stuff. Like, I don't think that's possible unless you're looking for it. The exposure was medium. In terms of difficulty, I would say definitely class three, but most of it's class two. Definitely some class four moves, um, depending on where you go. In general, you can really skirt around a lot of the difficult stuff. I don't recommend doing that because kind of defeats the whole purpose of a ridge traverse and you can get into a more dangerous situation that way and i would say overall that most of the little towers went there was a couple that maybe didn't go all the way obviously that first one we talked about already in general i think that it's an okay traverse i don't think it's in the classic books for a reason just because i don't think there's enough solid rock i don't really think there's enough scrambling per se but yeah, fine day, beautiful, beautiful up here. One final look at the traverse here. Technical section right here. Over to the rest of the easy up to Cupid. Not going well so far. It's gonna be a long walk. Oh man, it's not going well. Two miles and still nobody's picked me up. I'm gonna be walking up to the top at this rate. Well, that was awesome. I walked for about two and a half miles and then finally got a ride, sat on the back of that truck and oh, it's like heaven, just ripping up Loveland, not walking it. About 11.15 miles, 3,800 feet of gain. Again, that's assuming you were walking or whatever biking whatever running up back to Loveland Pass but that's the entire loop I just can't thank that guy again I picked up a number of hitchhikers over the years and it's great to feel like karma was repaid a bit so um, yeah that's gonna wrap up my video here of the Loveland Pass to A Basin Traverse uh, overall pretty good day as always for a full free trail guide of this hike you can check the link in the description below just to help support the channel through gear and everything else uh, donations you can also check out my website, thevirtualsherpa.com, which I've linked in the description below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you even more to that guy for giving me a ride up here, uh, that couple, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next adventure.